Line, line, everywhere a line. Sometimes commuting home is so bad, you may want to sing a protest song. I don't know why there is no more <laughs> service. Here at King George Station in Surrey, Indercor takes the 321 bus, one of the most complained about routes in all of Metro Vancouver and the most complained about in Surrey. I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's very crowded. Uh, there's no space to stand also because there are so many people on this route. In Vancouver, iron worker Genevieve Capilano is proud to be building the latest, most state-of-the-art piece of transit infrastructure in Metro Vancouver, the Broadway subway. But until it's finished, she rides the busiest, most complained about piece of transit infrastructure in Metro Vancouver. 99 B-Line, UBC. The 99 B-Line. Oh man, it's like sardines in a can, for sure. It's just so crowded, people are waiting two, three buses to just get it home. These are two of the 10 most complained about TransLink bus routes and fixes maybe a long ride away. Now, TransLink sent CBC News data on its 10 most complained about bus routes for 11 months of the year. And through a freedom of information request, we got the actual words of customers' complaints. Yet another bus with sorry bus full. Why is it that even on a Sunday morning, I can't rely on TransLink to get me to work on time? I try and leave earlier and it's still late or it just doesn't come or is full. It's obvious more buses are needed. It's ridiculous how bad it is. Now, it's worth noting that complaints are actually down about 6.5% from last year, but some of the busiest routes are causing real frustration. The 99 led the way with the most complaints. But if we look at complaints per million trips, it's actually the 23 a tiny bus in the West End. Other routes in the 10 most complained about include the R4, the 25, and the 49, as well as the 319, the 335, and the 321. What do riders complain about the most? Driver issues about half the time, along with overcrowding and not getting on board. I waved at the bus driver twice, which he saw me do, so that he would stop at the stop and pick me up. He looked at me and drove right past me, not picking me up. The bus just drove past and it was a couple of people waiting. This is not the first time it has happened and I'm very unhappy as a customer. Some bus drivers in Surrey need to be more considerate. TransLink says they're investing heavily in customer experience and communication. And complaints about drivers are investigated and act upon if warranted. We had over 400 million boardings last year, so that's one complaint per 16,000 boardings. But overcrowding is harder to fix. Bigger buses where we can and increase service as much as we can, but we're really bumping up against the limitations of our system with our current funding. TransLink and its mayor's council want a massive service expansion, including a doubling of buses. But the $21 billion plan is unfunded, and current revenues aren't keeping up with today's demands alone. You know, we essentially um, fall off uh, a bit of a fiscal cliff uh, starting in the beginning of 2026. And so we don't sit here with an ability to expand services now. Dennis Agar knows that firsthand. I saw uh, the data and the numbers really rapidly rising about overcrowding. Agar worked at TransLink for 10 years, planning bus routes. But he said he became increasingly frustrated with the authority's inability to keep up with demand. And I really started to notice the numbers creep up in terms of overcrowding and pass-ups and delay. He quit in October to found a non-profit advocating for passengers. Thought I could achieve more on the outside. And he's worried that a lack of funding has TransLink moving buses from one busy region to another. Taking buses from places like Vancouver, where the ridership is coming back more slowly, and shifting them to Surrey. But they've already cut service in Vancouver as much as they can. They've cut it to the bone. TransLink says that's a grim reality amid its funding crunch. And it has raised the need for transit dollars many times in 2023. While Victoria and Ottawa both highlight the billions they've already spent on transit, they aren't yet offering many specifics for new commitments. The BC government says it's working to find sustainable revenue for TransLink, including for its expansion priorities. Meanwhile, the federal government is promising permanent transit funding for longer-term plans, expansion and projects, but those dollars aren't rolling out until 2026. And until that money arrives and service expands, passengers could be in for more bumpy rides. For CBC News, I'm Liam Britton. And I'm Akshay Kulkarni.